Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today you join me in the 2023 Kia Sorento, this one being the self-charging hybrid edition model. The Kia Sorento is their largest model of the range, the seven-seater option, and that will soon be not the case when the EV9 comes along, which is their new flagship electric vehicle. But for now, this is the biggest and best car that they do, and it does impress. So the start of the video is normally when I talk through all the different options and engine choices and all that stuff, but right now here in the UK, as of filming, it's actually quite simple. You get one choice of trim, which is the Sorento Edition, and it comes with absolutely everything. It's an amazing spec, it's just standard, there's no options to take, even this panoramic glass roof, which is amazing by the way, is standard as part of that edition model. And Kia describe it as glorious, and I can definitely attest to that. It's, it is a glorious array of specification that comes standard with this car. All of the tech, all of the stuff that's included, it's fantastic. However, the price is high as a result. This particular one I'm driving today is the self-charging hybrid, which is a 1.6 turbo mated with an electric motor, and it comes in at around 51,000 pounds, which is a lot for a Kia. And that's not saying anything bad about the Kia name, because when anyone says to me now, what should I buy? If they're not a car person, I tell them Kia, because not only are you getting an industry leading warranty in this thing, seven years, 100,000 miles, some of the best dealer networks in the country, um, best after sales and also a great spec list of standard but it just comes with so much tech and so many quality of life features that you might enjoy so forget about all of the spec then we'll get on to that the other two engine choices are a 2.2 litre diesel which will get you slightly better economy but at the cost of a less refined experience and that one is the entry level one that starts at around £49,000 Personally, I probably wouldn't go for that one because there's not much in it in terms of the actual performance apart from the extra torque and I really think you'll be trading off quite a bit for that. Then there's the plug-in hybrid model which is probably best for business users because of the benefit in kind. So that's that, but personally I'm not a massive fan of plug-in electric. I prefer these self-charging. Um, the the plug-in model will get better economy overall if you keep it charged up and it will do 35 miles on all electric. But to be honest, I'd rather just skip that and go for the convenience of this self-charging model. So yeah, it's kind of expensive. Let's talk about the rivals for a sec then. If you want to go a bit cheaper, you've got the Peugeot 5008, which has a probably nicer and more modern interior. However, that one probably isn't going to be quite as well equipped in terms of the tech and the safety features. Uh, then you've got the Mercedes GLB, which is kind of in the same price range, but that one's going to be much more cramped in size because it's not as big as this. But if you're a badge snob, that might be the one to go for. Then there's the kind of the, the budget Volkswagen Audi group stuff, the Seat Turaco and the Skoda Kodiak, both very good cars, but definitely a bit plain Jane in comparison to this. And again, won't come with as much. You're gonna have to really start ticking some boxes. So yeah, I probably wouldn't go ahead and buy one of these new, but if you're looking for a lease deal on one of these, check out my affiliate lease loco in the description below where you can find all of the best lease deals on this car. And that's the sort of thing, this is gonna be one of those cars that really depreciates and probably isn't worth buying brand Brand new with cold hard cash so unless you can find a good monthly deal on one I would say maybe look at one that's used um, you know a couple of years old something like that just because then you're going to be getting slightly better value and also in terms of the after sales I'm sure you're gonna get a much better experience with anything from Kia or Hyundai as well talking of Hyundai or Hyundai as they keep telling us it is uh, the Santa Fe, that's basically the sister car of this and it's around the same price I would argue has a prettier interior however I don't know, it's gonna be much of a muchness. I said the same thing when I was talking about the uh, the sort of the Kia versus Hyundai debate when it came to the, the smaller models. It, a lot of it's gonna be preference for you at the end of the day, but one to keep in mind, definitely. So with all that admin out of the way, then let's talk about this thing, the Sorento Edition. Now, I actually find this to be a really nice day-to-day -day SUV. It's absolutely cavernous in here in terms of the space that it offers. Um, you, obviously you've got a seven seat configuration. The rear seats at the very, very back do have air conditioning and they've got cup holders and stuff like that. So you do get a decent amount of options back there anyway. A little bit cramped, but you know, the, the row behind me here is really spacious. You can move the seats backwards and forwards. You can recline them slightly as well. And you can also move the passenger seat electrically forward and backwards to give you some more room as well. So lots of options for those people in the seats on the second row. And not only that, but you've got cup holders there, you've got heated seats back there, um, heated and ventilated in the front here. So a nice comfortable experience for you and your passengers. Yeah, space in the back is absolutely cavernous, like you're not gonna 
encounter any issues fitting anything in there. You can fold everything completely flat. There's pretty much no load lip, um, and you can either have the cargo cover in or out. Like there's lots of configurable options for it, um, and you can pretty much camp back there. You, I'd say you'd be able to get a double bed in there. You know, a small double mattress. You'd probably be able to fit. Um, it's yeah, it's very large. It's also got quite a flat floor in that second row as well. It's quite a comfortable place to be if you're a middle passenger, although this car isn't quite the widest, so you're not going to get the best experience with three adults there potentially, but still, nonetheless, loads and loads of headroom. I'm six foot and I've got loads of room here, even in my with my seat in quite a raised driving position and with this pan roof obviously eating into that space a little bit as well. I think the pan roof is really well done. You can get an electric sunshade that covers the whole thing. If you don't want it, you want a darker experience in here, or you can have it completely open which is really really nice also you've got the ice fix points in here which are the kind of squish it between the leather kind so it might not wear too well but it does mean that there's not any plastic covers although personally i do prefer the flip down ones that kia do which i just think are a little bit more convenient um, and less likely to cause it to look a bit rubbish in a few years seating overall is comfortable though i can get a really nice driving position because i've got thigh support which is electrically adjustable lumbar support also electrically adjustable and loads of adjustment in the seat as well to get it just to the right driving position i've got a nice big armrest here i've got an armrest for my arm on the other side and it really is somewhere you can just sink into for lots and lots of time um, on the motorway a great place to be as well of course because you've got all of the driver assist tech in here which kia is known for so for example you've got lane departure warning which will also steer the car back into lane for you with haptic feedback and an alarm if you're going to stray into someone uh, you've got the blind spot monitoring which is fantastic it comes up on the gauge cluster in front of you so if you're ever in a situation where you're unsure whether there's something in your blind spot as soon as you indicate the camera will appear really really nice feature your mirrors will dip as soon as you put it into reverse they not only dip but they come into the wheels you've got a 360 degree camera on this model with a top down view and the top down view is absolutely immaculate on these it's one of the best i think on the market in a normal car and i absolutely love it because it makes the car so maneuverable it means that you can get into the tightest of little spaces because you can see everywhere where the car is you've also got a camera that shows you exactly where the wheels are against the curb so even though this thing is quite large it doesn't really feel it i actually think that this is easier to park than my audi tt i know that sounds crazy but when you see how well the cameras work uh, for example in my local park where i go quite a lot either for exercise or i go to film um there's kind of these tiny little markers that show where the bays are there's not any like road markings or lines so it's quite hard to see where you're where you're pointing the car but in this with the top down view i can pretty much just look at that i wouldn't advise it but you can pretty much park the car just looking at the screen because you've got such good visibility around the whole thing and not only that but you've also got very good visibility in here as well now of course there is quite a big c pillar but that's not too bothersome because of all of this camera tech in here it's not something that i would really stress about the other thing as well is that it's quite a boxy design so if I'm sat sort of high enough, I can get a good view out and it doesn't feel anywhere near as big as it actually is on the road. It feels quite narrow, it feels quite easy to place. Um, and unless you're gonna go for something smaller like a GLB, then I think it's uh, it's quite good for this size of car. It doesn't feel too cumbersome at all. And not only that, but for a big heavy car as well, this thing's nearly two tons. And thanks to self-leveling rear suspension and some clever steering setup, there's not much body roll either like i'm gonna chuck it really hard around this corner here it feels pretty flat and i can come out and you can see me moving around but the car itself is staying pretty true to the road and it's quite quick in terms of the steering there's not much wallowing around to be fair like you can feel it when you come to a stop on the brakes you can feel the car kind of like bob around a little bit and obviously if you take a if you suddenly turn you can kind of feel the front turns in and the back doesn't quite want to follow it straight away which is a bit of a strange sensation um, but the four-wheel drive system in this is really good and it keeps up with whatever you throw at it um, and can be capable of some off-roading stuff as well you've got some drive modes down here which affects the uh, information you see in front of you so you've got eco sport and smart which are your main driving modes for day to day and then you've got snow mud and sand which are your off-road ones which will change the drivetrain accordingly to the terrain that you need to be working with um, but overall it does what it says on the tin it's it's comfortable enough the fact that they've gone with these chunky tyres rather than going for really big blingy wheels means that you've got very little road noise at all. The only noise that I get is a little bit through the glass as cars pass because there's no double glazing. Um, and you also get a little bit of wind noise from this front pillar here. But 
overall nothing really too dramatic it's it's quiet enough in here that i'd be comfortable on a long journey and once you've got the stereo turned up a little bit not too bad at all stereo in here is a bose unit it's 12 speaker system it's not the best in the world it's not the best that i've heard i, I do think that the bose systems can be a bit underwhelming in comparison to some of the competitors in cars but it's definitely better than like a stock system in most cars you've got a bit of punch in the low end um, it just seems a little bit there's not much clarity to it it doesn't sound very crisp even with the eq tweaks to my personal preference it just doesn't impress me but it's good um, so you know it, take that with a pinch of salt so heading back to the tech in here then um, you've got a 10.25 inch touchscreen which has apple carplay android auto and the amazing kia uh, system on there i don't particularly like the way it looks but i love the way that it feels and interacts it's always very snappy it always does stuff right and i say this about all kia hyundai genesis products they're always the best in terms of their navigation um, obviously bmw i drive is up there as well uh, but this one is probably the most easy to use i would say um, apart from the fact there's nothing apart from the touch screen to control it it would be nice if there was a bit more uh, sort of control bit like iDrive where you've got an option to control it elsewhere and um, this doesn't have that unfortunately and the touch screen is a little bit far away over here so i feel like i'm kind of struggling to use it on the move but you know apple carplay does make things easy with that regard so you know that tends to be what i use in the car uh, but you've got loads and loads of quality of life features which is what Kia are known for so for example when you drive into a tunnel the uh, aircon recirc will turn on so that you don't get fumes in the cabin there's also a mode on here for passenger talk so you can press that and it's like an intercom with the rear seats so you don't have to turn around or shout you've also got quiet mode which is a feature that basically removes the use of the rear speakers and just puts the volume very quiet in the front so if you've got kids or adults <laughs> asleep in the back of the car you don't have to disturb them it's genius there's also a voice memo feature on there so if you're driving along you think oh i really should jot that down just pop it in the voice memos and then you can listen to it when you get home really simple little touches and you've also got kia drive profiles which is when you get in the car you've got the option to select between a couple of different drive profiles so that you can set your preferences at the touch of a button say you know you're sharing your car with a partner or something like that then that's the ideal situation you can just select your profile and everything will be set to your own personal preference including things like the stereo the ambient lighting color um, and all of the settings for all the drive modes the digital cluster in front of me here is really good as well shows me what's going on with the drivetrain um, and you can have it display basic info about your current drive situation um, it doesn't show you your nav or anything like that but i don't think it really needs to um, i know the volkswagen audi group cars have slightly better use of that space but personally i'm happy with the layout and you've got a few different styles to choose from which also change with the drive modes or you can select them manually um, and it just displays enough information you've got traffic sign recognition on there as well and a nice head-up display that shows you blind spot monitoring um, and any information about your cruise control but the only annoying thing about that i find is the um, traffic light uh, sorry the traffic sign will flash violently at you if you stray even ever so slightly over the speed limit so I'm in a 40 zone now I'm doing literally 41 and it's currently blinking at me and the one on the digital cluster in front of me is also blinking at me and they're out of time so they're doing this which is quite frustrating um, I'm sure you can probably turn that off but you know it's just one of those little nitpicky things interior I would describe as functional rather than pretty um, the Santa Fe definitely has a nicer look to it it looks a bit more like the Genesis ones um, and if I'm honest at this sort of money I think I would be looking at a used GV80 from Genesis because even though they don't offer the same hybrid options you know that's a really nice car looks like a Bentley and you know feels nicer inside it's got a lot more torque because of the three litre diesel uh, you know much better sound system it's a lot of car for the money um, so if you want to check out my review of the Genesis GV80 I'll link that in the description as well but yeah in here it's it's nice enough you've got some nice patterns the materials feel okay the leather's nice quality um, and you've got some nice kind of um, accents in terms of lighting as well you've got some ambient lighting which you can change the color of to your preference which is nice um, and the the air vent situation is a little bit odd you've got you've, I've got one here for my knees and I've got one over here for my armpits it seems like but they work quite well and the climate controls themselves I'm quite happy with it's that nice key combination of the touch sensitive stuff and the physical buttons where you need it so I've got uh, like toggle switches for the temperature I've got a nice big off button which I love just turn the whole thing off and I've also got an automatic climate control button which has three stages which I really like you can have it on you know quite a, a low setting or you can have it sort of full blast and you get a bit more control over it in that way rather than having to manually dial it around and then you've got a few touch sensitive buttons in the middle for the more specific controls but personally I'm, I'm pretty happy with the the mix of, of buttons and and touch there it's intuitive you can feel it when you're driving um, and i think that's all you can ask for really 
Uh, same with the steering wheel. The steering wheel is always really good. It's got a nice feel to it. Um, and you've got toggle switches for your volume and your uh, skipping tracks. Uh, you've also got a shortcut button, uh, which you can program, a drive mode select button, um, and you've also got your uh, lane keep assist button with the auto steer. And that's a nice way of turning it off. You can turn it on with just a touch of a button. It will automatically steer you in lane, or you can press and hold it, and it will turn off all of the lane keep assist features completely. So for example, on a road like this, if I were to start straying slightly, the car would beep and it would vibrate and it would pull me back into lane using the steering and if you're driving in town that can be a little bit disconcerting and make it makes me a little bit uncomfortable and paranoid because if you go to overtake something the car's screaming at you what are you doing what are you doing and and you know it's trying to steer you back into lane and crash into parked cars and stuff um, and you can literally just press and hold that for a few seconds and it will turn it all off completely so the fact that you've got that level of control without having to go through loads of sub menus I really like and that's something that Kia and Honda have always been really good at but it is nicely thought out in here in terms of the space you've got nice big storage bins in the doors with your cup holders or your sorry, your bottle holder you've got uh, cup holders in the back as well you've also got cup holders up here nice big space for your phone with some charging ports unfortunately it's all USB A in here rather than USB C the fact that you get a pan roof as standard with the addition is lovely it's a really nice addition and it makes this black interior feel a lot lighter which is really nice and in terms of paint options on the exterior you literally get three here at the moment you've got black white or gray and I've got the pearl white here which I do think is really nice against the uh, sort of black accents of the car and to be honest I've always been a bit interested in the styling of the Sorento it's a bit of a boxy shape but with enough lines and, and features to it that it's interesting and I think in black, it looks like the typical car you'd see in an American movie where it's like an undercover FBI car. Like it's very like American looking and unassuming. Coming back to the drivetrain then and how this feels, this one is the self-charging hybrid, which is probably the one I'd recommend to be honest for most people because you don't have to worry about plugging it in and sort of the electric range and stuff because it deals with all that for you. Um, and you don't have to worry about the diesel. You know, diesel is going to be outdated. It's probably going to depreciate more. It's probably going to be you know not the best choice i think it's just a lot more unrefined in terms of how it drives because this will be in mostly electric mode when you pull away so as you pull away from a set of lights or if you're sitting in traffic it's mostly an ev so you get that nice little shove of torque um, and you also get that kind of nice smooth electric feel you don't really feel it jolting around and changing gears it is mated to a 1.6 turbo petrol engine um, total combined is about 226 horsepower ish around there so it's not powerful especially for the weight of the car but the electric motor torque helps with that um, but the diesel does come with 90 newton meters of torque more so your mileage may vary that's probably the one you'd want to use if you're towing and stuff like that but for day-to-day -day driving i think this is a nice sensible option it's rated for 38 miles per gallon combined and i've been getting wait for it 38 yeah bang on which i'm really happy with uh, for again for a big car it's really good and you know you might be getting i think it's 42 they quote for the diesel really like are you going to notice that day to day i don't think so personally um, and i think the refinement of this in town sitting in traffic is much better than having a diesel the six speed auto in this you don't really notice when it's in use to be honest um, only when you're really ringing it out and my only complaint about the combined drivetrain is when you're sort of gunning it out of a junction if you really need to make a quick move or if you're going slowly and then you suddenly need to put your foot down there's not quite enough power and the difficult part is the system is trying to decide whether to just use EV or whether it needs to kick the engine in and to what degree and what gear it needs and so on and so forth so you find yourself in a situation where it almost feels like the throttle pedal is communicating to the engine via cup and string it just doesn't want to do what you want it to quick enough like you 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 it did it then I stamped on the throttle and it, it took a good one and a half to two seconds before it went ah okay cool let's go um, and that's that can be a little annoying and that's been my one big gripe driving this thing this week but you know it, it really isn't too bad and as I say round town it is so smooth and refined and I very rarely feel or notice the engine or the gearbox kicking in when I've got my music on it's not very gruff at all and because it's not a CVT like in something like a Ford Cougar hybrid um, this isn't too screamy when you really put your foot down the only time you notice it is when you're like flat to the floor and the engine's really working because it's a small engine in a big car it will rev out and we'll get to that in a moment of course if you've got a charge point at home then the plug-in hybrid might be a better option because you're going to get better economy out of that than the 38 mpg that i've been getting in this right the time has come to hustle it down some country lanes 
and again this is a big heavy car it's not made to be sporty the steering is nicely weighted but it doesn't feel sporty and responsive it feels just soft and comfortable um, you can sort of feel where the car's headed but as i say if you try and turn in a little bit too quickly it feels like the front's more compliant than the rear which can be a little bit bizarre so i'm just going to get my windows down a little bit here just so that you can hear what the engine sounds like under load um, i'm in normal uh, drive mode at the moment let's stamp on it and then as you let go of the throttle it doesn't stop responding straight away that's one thing that i found that i didn't like in situations where you want to gun it if you suddenly floor it i'll let go and now it will stop accelerating so that's a little bit odd as well like it doesn't you know it doesn't stop straight away based on your your throttle response um so that's that's been my only complaint about the drivetrain but overall just living with it it's it's lovely um you do have paddles on the steering wheel as well if you want to take over and go into manual mode on the engine is there a reason to no it's it's slow it's unresponsive yeah off the line you do get a little bit better throttle response but again you can hear that it works a little bit hard there let's close the windows up so you don't get some of the wind noise it does respond a little bit better in sport mode like especially when taking your foot off the accelerator um, so maybe if you are kind of gunning it around a little bit that's the one to go for but the sort of the eco and the smart modes uh, tend to use the electric drive uh, more in a sort of engaging way so i think that's kind of better for day to day and you don't get as much of this engine noise as well because it's trying to use the electric a little bit more um, but yeah the throttle response definitely is a little bit improved in the sport mode but again do you really do we really need these oh the, the paddles are pointless i think like it takes so long to change gear and you can't actually tell what revs it's doing anyway because there's no rev counter so you're going based on the engine sound and then the engine will cut out and go into ev mode and yeah I, I just don't think it's really really worth using and then you have to put it back into drive so that it's not hanging the gear it's a nice inclusion they feel nice the paddles it, uh, they're not they've not got a particularly satisfying click to them but the actual paddles themselves feel all right um but uh, yeah effectively i just would not bother yeah even over all this terrain it feels quite compliant i feel confidence in place in the car Drop the braking doesn't even feel too spongy for self charging either sometimes they feel a little bit weird but this one is quite progressive it definitely feels a little bit squashy at the low speeds but you know braking from there I, it doesn't feel like there's any weird travel in the pedal or anything like that so 0 to 60 is in around nine seconds which isn't particularly wonderful but it's a big family car what do you expect you know i'm sitting here i've got my heated steering wheel i've got my heated and ventilated seat although to be completely honest the ventilation on the seat feels a little bit like an asthmatic blowing for a straw it could be better it's not not quite the same as the one on my lexus was um, and it could be updated i mean it's definitely not the most modern solution and that's why i'm saying i don't think i'd recommend buying one of these brand new because it's just it's just not quite as good uh, as some of the rivals in terms of the the overall aesthetic inside you know i, I think it might be worth waiting for a newer model if you're going to buy one brand new with real money uh, the other option as well is if you don't need something quite so big look at the Kia Sportage the slightly smaller version of this car because that's got the much more modern interior and you can get it with this same uh, power plant as well the 1.6 turbo self-charging hybrid which I would really recommend and again unless you're really kind of hustling it all the time then that's the only time that I find this this uh, powertrain a bit irritating but most of the time you're going to be driving like this just cruising along and that's what I've been doing for 90% of my week with the car and it's been absolutely lovely to live with um would i have one probably not because i'm a bit more of a sporty driver i prefer kind of a, a nice quick responsive car but for the day-to-day -day average joe who just wants a good car that's what this is and that's what most kias are they're just brilliant they're not exciting but they're brilliant and i'll leave you with that um i'll say alternatives potentially look at the honda santa fe um, i've yet to review one of those but um hopefully i'll get one on the channel for you guys soon um and yeah any questions do let me know in the comments so there we have it guys the kia sorento i'm really pleased with this car as i say i don't think i'd buy one brand new but lease deals can be quite good on cars of this size so check those out in the link below also i've got my car vertical affiliate link in there as well if you're looking at purchasing one of these used and you want to check its history for any crash damage or theft or anything like that then uh, do use that discount as well thank you so much for watching thank you to kia as always for being excellent and sending me out the car 
Um, I've reviewed most of the fleet now. There's a few other ones to do and hopefully I can get on board with their new cars as they come out next year. But until then, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>